Uh, hello, everybody. Um, this morning, I'm joined by Neil Seeley from Exus, uh, who are a tour operator that we've used for a number of years now. Um, they're a pretty special. Well, they're not, I, I say they're a specialist tour operator. By that, I mean that they are very diverse in what they do. Um, as, as in a, for instance, um, I had some clients who wanted to go to Churchill and visit the polar bears and then uh, combine that with a two center holiday and go down to Cuba for a bit of sunshine. Now, there's not very many tour operators who would uh, do something like that. And Exus handled that very well. And my clients were very impressed. So we used them uh, a lot for Europe for uh, pretty much worldwide. And I've invited Neil on today to have a chat. Uh, he'll introduce himself in a moment or two. And we're going to talk. Uh, we'll start, Neil, I think, by talking about uh, your company and also some ideas for the summer and then perhaps moving on to some ideas for the autumn. So welcome, Neil. Thank you, Martin. So, yes, um, as Martin said, that was a great introduction. We are a, um, a specialist to operator, but we do cover over 90 countries across all seven continents. So we have a very wide um, product offering and um, some, we, we, we tend to spend a lot of our time looking for perhaps the more unusual experiences. In fact, our brochure is called Escape the Obvious. And while we can do all the, all the standard stuff, we, we always have a few little special surprises up our sleeve that we can throw in. Um, and very much of this is thanks to our team of experts who have traveled throughout the countries that we sell, um, in some cases are from those countries. And they've got an absolute wealth of first hand knowledge of the destinations that we operate to. So yeah, I would say, actually, Neil, to interrupt you, you you've got a quite a young team, haven't you? And um, I've been to your offices a couple of times and uh, they are very well traveled which I think is important, isn't it, when you're selling different destinations? Well, well, absolutely. If, if you're really going to help your travellers get under the skin of the country and actually experience the culture and the, the true destination, I guess, if you will, um, it's important to know it very well yourself yeah. um, because we, we can then understand what the client wants and we can tailor the right experience for them. Yeah. Okay, so Neil, um, the summer, the summer's coming, it's around the corner. I know we're in the middle of January. It's a very wet day out there uh, and it's hard to think that there will be a summer. Where do you think uh, we'll be able to uh, look at going, let's say, um, uh, I probably would say that people will be looking to go away in June with a bit of luck uh, and then you've got the summer holidays. So where should we go? Well, you're, you're right, Martin, but we're, see we're seeing a lot more interest now in um, travel sort of from June onwards, which we also think is reasonable. Um, and the weather here, yes, it's, it's depressing at best at the moment. I look outside the window and it's pouring with rain, um, which certainly makes me want to get away. Um, and I'm sure it makes lots of other people feel the same way. So yes, Europe, there's actually a lot of exciting stuff going on in Europe this year. Um, much of this down to the fact that not a lot could happen last year. So there are lots of new hotels opening in Europe. Mm. Um, again, because they've been, some of them have been delayed from 2020. Um, others have been scheduled for 2021 in any case. So to give you a few examples, um, some of the hotels we work very closely with, um, Domes Resorts are opening Domes of Corfu, um, which is a great luxury family hotel. That's opening in summer 2021. The Marbella Elix opening in 2021 in Preveza in Greece, that was delayed from 2020. And Ecos are opening the Ecos Andalusia, which was scheduled to open last year um, and has been delayed to open this year. And in our opinion, Ecos is one of the best luxury all-inclusive chains in Europe. Mm. So there's some there's some really exciting um, there's some really exciting stuff happening in travel in in Europe this year. Um, there's Oku hotels also, which are opening two new hotels, um, one in Kos and one in Ibiza. So again, great laid back luxury, probably more aimed at couples. Um, and Six Senses are opening in Italy, Ibiza, and further afield even in Israel. So, you know, th there is, there's actually a lot going on behind the scenes. Yeah. And I think when travel opens up again, we'll have so much more to offer clients and also some great offers out there at the moment. Yeah. So there will be some really good prices as things start to bounce back. And I think with um, new hotels, particularly, you would think that um, 
as far as socially being socially distant uh, from others uh, and cleanliness and sort of um, procedures are probably going to be in place, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. In fact, we're, we're working very closely with all our partners, so all the hotels and um, our suppliers on the ground in our destinations to ensure that they are sticking to the highest standards of hygiene, the best protocol, um, because obviously this is, this, you know, it's vital that um, anyone traveling feels safe and indeed is safe. Mm. So, you know, for example, limits on number of people who can use a type of car. So perhaps if it's a group of three now, they won't be picked up in a car. It will be a fairly big minibus so that there is more space between them and the driver and everything else. Um, and there's hand sanitizers everywhere. Every Vehicles, hotels, rooms are all being sanitized regularly. So, yes. Um, and as you say, new hotels, ideal really, because they haven't been, they haven't had years to accumulate bacteria, yeah. as it were. It's all spotlessly clean. Yes. So um, that, that covers the sort of southern Mediterranean, doesn't it? Uh, Portugal, Spain, Italy, yeah, France. Greece, yeah. um, I, I, I was thinking that perhaps a lot of clients might look to Scandinavia this year for, for a, I mean, maybe even a short break. I think a lot of clients might actually want to do five or four, five or six nights, uh, you know, to, to sort of test the waters, as it were. Uh, do you have any, any thoughts on Scandinavia? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Um, we, in fact, what we are seeing is, as, it, as you rightly say, people are looking to, um, in fact, test the waters perhaps, and what they are planning is very much the sort of perhaps one or two center holidays rather than too much traveling around. Mm. So get to your destination and stay in maybe one place for a few days, move on somewhere else, but not, not sort of moving around every day and doing a very complicated multi-center holiday, um, which would then minimize the amount of contact you have with different people and different hotels and different cars. So yes, Scandinavia um, and including Iceland, in fact, lend, it, it lends itself perfectly to social distancing. Um, these are sparsely populated countries and they have in general managed the pandemic very well. Mm. So, you know, you have that reassurance that the government in the country is controlling things well. Um, they're offering good facilities for testing and even for if it came to it, self-isolation. So it does it does work well. We are seeing quite a lot of interest, certainly in um, Iceland has always been a popular destination for us, but we're seeing renewed interest in Iceland and the Scandinavian countries at the moment. For yeah, this, I, this. yeah, Iceland is a, um, it's a year round destination really, isn't it? Because you've got the Northern oh, Lights absolutely. During, uh, during the winter and then in the summer, you've got beautiful scenery and beautiful, clear, sunny days. So oh, it, it's it's amazing how it how it transforms from you know a white snow covered landscape in winter, um, in about April May it's May probably, it suddenly transforms to these beautiful green meadows. Yes. Um, but you know an incredible destination for any time of the year. Yeah. I've been lucky enough to go there. Great hotels, great service, great food, and you know when you're there, you don't you don't come near anyone else because it's such a wide open country. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so moving on from Europe, um, probably uh, if, if you're going to be looking long haul, I would suggest that clients are probably going to be thinking about next, uh, well, probably from October onwards. And I think uh, we're probably agreed that a lot of destinations um, are probably not going to open up until October, November time. So um, I'm a big fan of um, the UAE. Uh, I know that you can go to Dubai and spend five or six nights um, have great temperatures, great hotels, great restaurants. Uh, and I know that you, you're a fan of the UAE as well. And in particular, you were talking to me about uh, Oman. So, um, yes. yeah, tell me a little well, bit about uh, Oman. Oh, Oman is, so, so I think Dubai is probably, Dubai itself and the UAE, so the seven emirates of the UAE are very well known now, or be much better known. Um, certainly Dubai and Abu Dhabi are, um, and Places like Ajman and Ras Al Khaimah and Fujairah have become very well known. Um, and yes, great destination, easy to get to, safe, very high standards. But Oman is coming up as a, a really good alternative, especially for perhaps people who've maybe been to Dubai and want, want to go back but have something a bit different. Um, Oman is fantastic. We went there on a family holiday 
less than a year ago, actually. I was very lucky to actually go on holiday in 2020. And in yeah. February, we went to Oman um, and had the most amazing trip. We, we you know, it's, it's a country about the same size. Uh, well, it, it's, it's, a, it's a big country, um, but about the same size as the whole of the UK put together, but with a fraction of the population. Mm. And um, so again, Oman is ideal for social distancing. You, you know, you're naturally, once you've got through the airport and you're out of Muscat, you're, you've just got wide open desert all around you. Yeah. Um, the, again, very high standards of hotels, very good. The cleanliness is, is second to none. In fact, Muscat is one of the cleanest cities in the world, and they're very proud of that. Mm. You'd notice that driving around Muscat, the capital, it's just spotless. You don't see litter, you don't see any dirt. Um, the buildings, everything is spotlessly clean. And um, so again, I think, you know, I would personally feel very safe there um, mm. in, in every aspect. I'm talking about the, the COVID situation now. Um, and there's so much to do, so much to see and do. So if you have been to Dubai and you want to delve a bit deeper into the Arabian culture, um, Oman's the perfect place for that. Friendly people and there's so much to learn from Oman. It's amazing. Yeah. I think you're right. And also, because in the last few days we've heard from uh, the UK government that you're going to have to have a PCR test when you're out in whatever country you're in before you're allowed to come back into the UK. And I heard uh, last week that uh, I think it's Razal Kaim. Uh, uh, Razal Yeah, Razal Kaim. That they were offering complimentary uh, PCR tests. Th th they are, yes. If you've stayed there for at least two nights in a hotel in Ras Al Khaimah, then you get a complimentary test before departing. Yes. So that takes care of your requirement for returning to the UK. Hopefully other countries will follow suit with this yes. because I think it's a great idea. Also, it's now been clarified overnight last night by our government that it doesn't have to be a PCR test. They're accepting the lamp tests as well okay. and the antigen tests. So a lot of these are a lot easier. Mm. Um, and this also makes it a lot easier for other countries to obtain the tests in other countries because... Yeah they're accepting a wider range of type, different types yeah, of because, tests. Because, I mean, that will become a bit of a stumbling block for some of the, uh, so, some countries in the world and are not really going to be able to organise that, are they? I mean, I, I feel for a lot of countries where they can't even roll out the vaccine programme efficiently yet. Um, so, yeah, it's, yeah, that, that's going to be very difficult. I think really the landscape has changed, hasn't it? And now uh, clients are looking to book uh, holidays where their financial commitment is perhaps limited. So do Exus have a, a particular policy, a COVID policy for balance payments? Or is it each, each individual one, is that slightly different? It, 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 so what we do is um, we've, we've introduced a more flexible policy, but what we can't do, because we sell over 90 holidays to over 90 countries mm. we can't have a single policy across the board because each place has its own rules each each airline each product each hotel we work with uh, have their own rules and their own terms yeah. but what we do is we get the maximum flexibility we can from our partners so if we're booking a certain hotel and a certain airline to get there we will talk to them at the time of booking to make sure that we have as much flexibility as possible. Um, and obviously we will discuss this before the booking is made. Yeah. But certainly, yes, there is a lot more flexibility out there. The hotels are working well with us on this and they're saying, yes, we'll offer flexibility up until you know a few days before or whatever. Sure. And um, it's making it possible for us to be more flexible. Yeah, and on your airline tickets, are you uh, able to have flexibility with some of those? I know that published fares, sometimes the ticket has to be issued straight away, but do you have contract fares with a lot of airlines? We, we do so certainly with a lot a lot of the uh, scheduled airlines we we have contracted fares where we don't have to issue the actual flight tickets till nearer the time so this gives us a lot more flexibility airlines have also to be fair to them been have adapted quite well now perhaps it took them longer than some of us would have liked but they are now being more flexible in terms of even if it's not a, a case of a refund at least um, a voucher that you've got up to two years in some cases to use yeah. so you know you while you may not get your money back at least you have you have that credit with the airline to use for a later holiday if you should decide that you don't want to go for any reason that's quite interesting actually because i i think back in 2019 weren't british airways 
moving towards making tour operators a lot more um, strict on issuing airline tickets so that you weren't you, you weren't going to get that flexibility and it's interesting how that's changed now and also obviously they realize the, the error of their ways shall we say um, yeah de de definitely there's there's ha ha everyone has had to become more yeah. flexible now in order to um well in order to get the business i guess um, and there are certain airlines out there who are going one step further and talking about offering the tests before people travel with them yes. and also offering COVID insurance or COVID guarantees where if you can't go because you test positive, for example, you then get your money back. So yes. there are more and more airlines starting to do that. And we do, when we have the, the choice, would favour an airline who offers that sort of policy. Yeah. No, I think you're right. And... Um, I know you're quite well versed in the airline industry, uh, family connections and all that. I think your father was a pilot, wasn't he? I, I, I'm the only person in my family who doesn't, in my immediate family, who doesn't work for it or hasn't worked for an airline. Yes, my, my father, my mother, my wife and my sister are yes. all airline crew or have been airline crew. So how do you see the airline industry? Uh, do, when do you reckon the recovery will be? I know that um, in 2021, I, I, I think that airfares are going to be, I think they'll start out relatively good value if you're booking a long way in advance, but I can just see the time coming in May and June when clients are coming in and saying, oh, we want to fly to, um, for argument's sake, Athens, you know, and, and do a Greek holiday where the availability is going to be less and the airfares, I think, are going to be quite high. But um, how do you see the recovery for the airline industry in terms of time, time it will take? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's very difficult to um, predict, really, as we've learned, I think, over the last eight months, it's hard to predict anything. But um, I do think airlines are keen that they have aircraft parked all over the place which they're paying hefty leases on mm. um, and they want to get those planes up in the air um, with with passengers on board because that's what you're meant to do if you have an aeroplane that's the yeah. only time they're not costing you money um, never mind making money I think that's a that's a real luxury for them right now yeah. um, and so I think they are keen they also have crew who are furloughed all over the place who are raring to go back to work um, and I think as soon as I, I think it will be a case of, you know, it's, it's a bit of a supply and demand thing. But I think as demand increases, the airlines are in a very good position to get their aircraft flying again. As we know, people, the crew who've been furloughed can be brought back on pretty much no notice whatsoever. They can be called straight back to work. Um, there are obviously training issues and all that, which will take a little bit of time. But, you know, they, they can get people back mobilized very quickly. They can get mm -hmm. aircraft mobilized very quickly. And I think if we start to see more people booking more holidays, we will start to see more routes being brought back. Yeah, it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation, isn't it? It, it, it is. At the moment, there are actually some pretty good fares out there. Um, so, yes, they will fill up quickly, I think. I think once people start to book... And it is happening. We are seeing more and more inquiries coming in for the summer. Mm. Um, I think those fares will naturally start to increase as seats get booked up. Um, so I would say if anyone is thinking of going, you know, plan, be, be brave, plan your holiday, book it. You will have flexibility if COVID prevents you from going. Yes. But you, you probably will get the best deals by, as we always say, by booking early. And it's probably more, more so than ever this year. Do you have a general deposit um, scheme? Or do you have a low deposit or are you just taking a, uh, a, a, a sort of a, a, a fixed sum? We, 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 take a, we, we take a standard deposit, but mm. again, this can be flexible. We, we speak to our, our suppliers and if people are looking for flexibility, we can always talk about it at the yeah. time of booking. Yeah, that's good. I think a lot of clients are actually looking for a fairly low deposit, aren't they? I don't think anybody wants to uh, put a deposit of 20% down on a holiday. Oh, no, no, yeah, that's definitely. a lot, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Neil, I think we've covered quite a lot in our short time, so I want to thank you for that. Um, I'd like to say to anybody who's, who's viewing this, uh, if we've piqued your interest at all in uh, summer holidays and uh, perhaps looking at long haul next uh, autumn and winter, to uh, get in contact with me, you know where I am. I'm down in Claygate at Green Star Travel. 
We've got an Instagram account and we're on Facebook as well. And my email address, as always, is martin, spelt with a Y, at greenstartravel.co.uk. And uh, if you send me through your inquiries, I can uh, hopefully help you secure something for the summer. Um, but thanks, Neil. Uh, really Thank appreciate you. Thank that. You, and uh, we'll talk soon, I'm sure.